In this video, I will be attempting to build BrickVault's 18,000-piece Star Destroyer mock, the Eviscerator. I decided to try and build this mock for two main reasons. The first was the previous build I got from them was the Resurgent-class Star Destroyer, which is a very similar model to this one. So I assume it has very similar pieces, and I don't think I'll have to spend nearly as much money as I would have with a different mock. So hopefully I'll be able to cut that nearly $4,000 price tag in half. The second reason was that I just really like this ship, and frankly, I found LEGO's newest Collector's Edition Destroyer underwhelming considering the price tag, so I thought, well, if I already have to spend over $700 for that version, why don't I just spend a little bit more money and get this far more detailed version? The only issue I hope Brick Vault resolved in this model, however, is that they used a different, hopefully easier technique to snap the bottom wings on. The thing that really made gathering all these pieces so difficult was not the large numbers of different types of pieces or large amounts of rare pieces, but the fact that a vast majority of the list required numbers in the three-digit range of fairly common pieces. I have a medium amount of nearly every common type of LEGO piece out there, but anything more than like 80 was kind of tough to gather, so I got a lot of yellow numbers in the process. Like before, incrementally I gathered the pieces until I eventually filled out the list, at around 67%. Well, I'm at the very end here, I've gathered up all the pieces I think I have, and we're only at 67%. I wish it was a little bit higher, but I guess that's all I have. I guess it's on to see what the price is. Once again, I ordered the pieces I needed and they all arrived within about a week. What you're looking at is nearly 20,000 pieces of Lego. And there is the first joining of pieces. It's a long road from here. Well, I finished the stand yesterday. It took me all day. I think that's partially because the pieces were kind of disorganized and I had to, you know, orient myself to where things are. Um. I'm a tiny bit annoyed that there's so many pieces in just this stand. It seems like a lot of decoration, which is nice, but I mean, we're talking like maybe a hundred dollars in pieces that uh, maybe weren't all that necessary. So, you know, mocks can't be perfect, but I would like there to be a little bit, I guess, more efficiency. So it's been about two days and I finally got the skeleton finished. It's uh, it's pretty heavy and very reinforced. So I guess I'm finally moving on to the outside. The, the decorations, the wings, the greebling, everything basically. Okay, so I built and put on the wings successfully. Uh, in stark contrast to the last model I got from Brick Vault. Um, I'm much happier with the method they used here. I think, personally, it, it I think it's sturdier and it just makes a lot more sense than whatever nonsense they were doing with the Resurgent class Star Destroyer that was just impossible to put on. These, uh, these just simple push-in, uh, like, joints into the underside panels just makes a lot more sense. Um, and it, I think it's like it's very clean. It's very tight. I'm I'm pretty happy with this. Props to the designer. Okay, after a few days, I got the top pieces on, and I gotta say, this seems to be a much better design than the last uh, Star Destroyer mock. It's it's pretty convenient actually. These just kind of slid right in, and there's not really any other connections, and it looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, after a few weeks of on and off building, I'm I'm getting close to being done. There's only this many pieces left on the table, and um, let's just say it's pretty close. I only have the head to do, and uh, and then we'll see it up on this table. Well, it's finally complete, and uh, I have a lot of leftover pieces, so. I don't know how much of this is due to human error, or or if the instructions just have a lot more extra pieces than, you know, listed than really needed there to be. I, I, uh, I, I don't know. I don't care. It's finished. 
After the model was complete, I could finally bask in its glory as it sat on top of my now-filled tables. I guess I'll start off with the positives because there are so many. While completing this model, I was impressed again and again with how thorough the detailing was. Everything from the hangar bay to the back of the destroyer is just as thought through as the front. I was astonished at how the designer managed to fit together so much angular geometry in a way that closed basically every seam I was worried it was going to have. I was also impressed by just how simple the connections were in retrospect. There were very few fancy pieces or connections. A lot of the sub-assemblies just rest on the others through gravity, and yet it all fit together amazingly well. And even with so much greebling, the model is sturdy. Almost too sturdy. I really have to give props to the designer because compared to the design of the resurgent mock, which was still pretty well designed despite the wings, this is a true feat of practical parts usage and planning. Especially when you consider there are nearly 20,000 pieces in this thing. When it comes to the negatives, only a few things stood out to me, and they're more or less nitpicks. When beginning this model, I found myself a little bit annoyed by just how much reinforcement there is on this frame. Now, I'm by no means an experienced builder. However, it seems to me that some of these crossbeams may have been a bit excessive. When you have all this inner structure, it makes the model very, very heavy. I think I would say 80% of the weight of this model is taken up just by the Technic structure and I'm curious to know if the designer really experimented and really determined if this was all that necessary. Because yeah, it's pretty sturdy. I feel like if I threw it off the first floor of my house, the Technic structure would still be intact. But is that necessary? I'm curious to know if putting all these Technic beams together makes that much of a structural difference, as opposed to just skipping a few more pinholes and adding cross beams more sparingly. The reason I'm a bit annoyed with this is because it was kind of tedious, but more so because those parts do add up. And that means more money that I have to spend on something that might not be all that important. I'll give the benefit of the doubt to the designer that these are necessary, because in all honesty, I don't know for sure. I would like to hear what they think more than anything else. Every other negative is outside of the design. There was a few errors and in instructions that I'll be pointing out here if they want to change them but they weren't a huge deal because I could refer to the mirrored wing I had already constructed. There's a lot of pieces on the inside that I wish they had just listed as able to buy in any color on Bricklink, because once it's all put together, they're never seen again. This would have saved me a bit of money because I could have used more for my collection. Ironically, the Resurgent Class mock did this a lot more. Keep in mind, again, these are what I would call pretty small things. The biggest selling point for this mock is the design and the ease of the instructions for the most part. This is a very well thought out mock, and the piece count and size is appropriate for this magnificent vessel. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I'm trying to make some more videos for the main channel, but it's been kind of hard to get to it. I've been busy with a lot of other things, but at some point I'll start up again. Thanks.